Welcome back to the Global Builder's Guide, episode 11. I'm an Eggman, and today we're doing something completely different. We're not doing anything with computer craft at all today. We are building and building and building. I mentioned in the last episode where we're going to be setting up an advanced facility, sort of a structure to house anything you could possibly want and then some, which means generally large and ideally interesting because if we're going to invest this kind of time into something, big old rectangle just isn't going to cut it. So what I've done is I've flattened out a section of land. Our working space is 70 blocks by 100 blocks, which is quite large for any building project short of duplicating actual world wonders. So we're off to a good start. Once I got that measured out, I decided to do sort of a general outline marking where the outer walls are going to go. Now the outer walls are basically the kind of thing that serve the purpose of allowing you to leave the structure and have a controlled lit area where monsters aren't going to blow your front door off as soon as you open it. And also if you're playing on a server to potentially impress the hell out of people who decide to swing by and say hello. So that's the whole idea is we're kind of getting everything set up, putting it into place, and then I, I, I was really actually, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna confess, I was really keen to start building this wall right away, but then I realized this build is much more than simply a wall, and if I were to build the wall right away, it would make it kind of difficult to get footage of the building of the rest of this stuff. So at least by getting the footprint of the wall in place, we can start laying out the dimensions for the, the actual structure, the structure proper, uh, and not worry about conflicting with the walls later on. Now I'm building this entire thing currently, right now what you're seeing out of cobblestone, and the reason for that is that we're still going to be using our turtle routines to survey the entire structure and be able to replicate it anywhere we want based on the coordinates that the turtle gives us. So it doesn't matter what it's built out of right now, because the structure we're building is not actually intended to be used, it's intended for use by the turtle to test our surveying routines so that we're able to duplicate the structure elsewhere. So it doesn't, I'm not really concerned. I wouldn't normally build this out of cobblestone, but between cobblestone and dirt, it's always a toss up. They're both the kinds of materials that I tend to see the most of. I would suspect that's the case for most people is they see a lot of cobblestone and a lot of dirt and then anything else they have to work to get. Well, this is a kind of a big build and I didn't really want to be messing around cooking off all that cobblestone into stone. And I also want to be able to use dirt in place of glass for various different parts in the build. Again, for the convenience factor of not having to cook all of that sand. So two different materials were required. Cobblestone was the first, dirt will be the second. That will give us a primary building material and glass to work with. And then from there we can just kind of go on and decide if we want to embellish the structure any further with any other materials. Now one of the things, if you've seen any of my Minecraft builds, you know I'm a big favor, uh, I'm a big fan, sorry, of angles and curves. Angles and curves are kind of what delineate from the shoebox style of building and the slightly more interesting style where people kind of look at it and say, hey, that took some some real time, some real planning, some real thought. I don't always come up with these curves and things of that nature on my own. I use a lot of a particular website called plots.co.uk. I've mentioned that previously. It's a great place to go. Uh, it gives you tools for mapping things out in a voxel sort of environment so that you can create circles and ellipses and spheres and all kinds of crazy shapes accurately, mathematically accurate that look good. I mean, as good as you can get them to look when you're building out of little cubes. So uh, a lot of that went into this and some of it also is just kind of guessing and kind of taking a look at things and seeing what works and what doesn't relative to what I want to accomplish. Now you can see we've got some sort of outer corner pieces going in and these are kind of like stacked cubes. I would I would accept that if someone wanted to say they're kind of stacked cubes or stacked rectangles. Um, sure, yeah, they are. Uh, and in this case, it's the way that they're stacked and the dimensions kind of give sort of a curved appearance to that outer corner edge, which to me, again, is just, a, it's a little bit more interesting than stacked cubes that are all sort of the same dimension. 
and I'm not trying to take anything away from people who are building their houses and things of the sizes and shapes and dimensions that they like that also happen to be rectangular or cubes. It, it, just for me, I, I would get pretty um, uninterested in duplicating that sort of structure over and over and over again. It's nice to be able to have a little bit of freedom to get some different shapes in there. So this is actually intended with sort of, sort of a modded Minecraft um, space requirements in mind. If a person was doing this strictly in vanilla Minecraft, I would suggest maybe make this more of like a spawn sort of thing with maybe a little bit of detail embellishment or maybe even changing some of the dimensions or something of that nature because frankly, unless you're building for the sake of building, which is very cool, you don't need this much space in a vanilla setup by any stretch of the imagination. But if you're into the modded Minecraft scene, and in particular some of the mod packs, they can contain upwards of 100 mods sometimes. Having a lot of space at one's disposal makes it a lot easier to kind of plan and lay out where you want to put things. And not only that, to be able to change things around as a person learns and kind of develops their sense of how things go together. For example, a person just starting out learning certain mod packs, certain mods, is going to put things together with the goal of getting them to work. They might try and get some aesthetic details in there, but the way things change as you learn and sort of evolve the understanding, very rarely does it ever end up looking good the first time out. But if you ever give yourself a chance to look back and say, you know, if I could do that all over again, I would do this and this and this differently, sometimes that's what you end up doing, is, is redoing the whole thing. And having the space to do that, say, okay, well, I'm going to leave this up and running over here because it's serving a purpose, and I'm going to set up another one over here, and then I'll tear down the first one. Space. Space becomes the issue, and being able to lay things out the way that you want them and not have to worry about, I have to make this work within a 3x3x3 three by three by three <laughs> cubic space is sometimes a benefit. And then if you want to make it as small as possible, you can, not because you have to, but because you choose to. Now... You can see we're starting to get some walls into the into place. Some of the corner areas, actually there's only one corner area there that's really not fleshed out. And then we get the, the basically getting the, the borders of the walls into place. And once those are in, then all the, the measuring is done and things get a lot more relaxing in terms of just placing blocks and building and filling in the gaps, so to speak. So you can see here, we're just kind of connecting everything together getting all the wall the walls with the borders it makes it a lot easier to kind of also step back and gauge how it's going to look as a finished project before we start filling it in and taking all that extra time because if we don't like it it's easier to tear down a single line comprising a border than it is to pull down a whole wall so that's what I'm doing is just kind of filling it in taking a look pretty happy with it so far this would be about three stories I would expect um, maybe more if you like the really high ceilings. I'll probably just do two stories the way it's coming out because there's actually going to be more stacked on top of this and then the walls themselves are actually going to be quite grand sort of reaching up and around and here comes the rain. Always the rain. It rains so much in my world. I don't really get why or how that's necessary but it happens. This is a good example to explain the blue lights that you're seeing all over the place are produced by one of the mods that I'm using. It's one of the modules in my power glove. I can shoot lights onto different surfaces and they just stick there. It makes it very, very handy for lighting things. Uh, and in this case, making things a little bit more visible for you guys when I'm building at night. Because otherwise this would be very frustrating to watch because between the rain and the dark, you probably wouldn't be able to see anything. So that's what the blue lights are for those of you who are wondering. And now you can see, kind of moving across this way, sort of the scale that we're working at. Filling in the walls, getting some lights into place. Very, very large sort of structure. And again, I'm trying to, you know, put it in my mind. What all could we go, you know, be putting into these different spaces? And I realize it probably could stand to be a little bit better. So we're building up some columns from the corners. And then we're going to put another layer on top of that. And I think for the most part, we'll actually keep this part of the structure mostly enclosed. We can throw in some windows. We can throw in, obviously, we're going to have to throw in some room for doors. But we don't necessarily need to worry too much 
about windows and things of that nature for the view because there's going to be a wall around the ends and also extending up on either side but we'll probably have to wait until the next episode to take a look at that maybe the third episode it depends on what time we get finished with the actual structure and you can see with the columns in we're already starting to build in some height and we finish off this last wall here you can see the scale. There's my character basically going back and forth. It's it's large relative to the character, but it's not super huge. Super huge would be character looks like a little dot moving around as we're doing the time lapse here. So I think we're in pretty good shape for size. And we're also running out of time for this episode. I don't want to make these too long because it's difficult to keep them interesting beyond about the 10 minute mark. That's when people start to say, okay, I've seen, seen enough for now. Thank you. That's good call it a day so the next episode i think we'll either do the walls or we'll continue building up one of the two i definitely want to keep moving on this take a little bit of a break from the computer craft stuff while i get some of that sorted out so leave your comments and feedback below and thanks for watching hey.